Colombia has declared war against the hippo. What? Okay, let's back up. Hippos are from sub-Saharan Africa, so what are they doing in South America? The answer is, strangely enough, cocaine. The cocaine hippo saga is one of the strangest conservation stories of all time, and it might soon be coming to an end. So we sent one of our producers to Colombia to see one of the largest and most dangerous invasive species in the world, the Colombian hippo. The Colombian invasive hippo crisis has been over 40 years in the making. The ethics of their removal is muddier than in almost any other invasive species, as is the danger. And to this day, the public is divided on what to do with them. But let's start from the beginning. In 1981, notorious drug dealer Pablo Escobar imported four hippos for his private zoo. His daughter was a huge animal lover, and Pablo, at that time one of the richest men in the world, was happy to buy her three females and one male hippo. The hippos were brought to his estate, Hacienda Napoles, halfway between Medellin and Bogota, and housed in a large pond alongside other wild African animals like giraffes, rhinos, elephants, and zebras. Because of their owner, they came to be known as cocaine hippos or narco hippos. The state took over Hacienda Napoles after Escobar's death in 1993, and most of the animals got transferred to zoos around the country. But the hippos were too difficult to capture, and the herd had grown to 16 by then, so they were left at the pond, assuming that they would stay there and would eventually die out. But they didn't. The local agencies failed to realize that Hacienda Napoles was very close to the Magdalena River, the largest river in Colombia, and a perfect habitat for hippos. A few years later, the cocaine hippos found the Magdalena and spread through it. With no dry season or natural predators, their population ballooned. Today, there are an estimated 160 hippos as far as 100 kilometers away from where they were first introduced at Pablo Escobar's private zoo. So what's the big deal? Why can't we let cocaine hippos enjoy a nice South American river? For a while, that was the attitude of the government, too, until reports of attacks on fishermen became all too common. Hippos are famously territorial. They're one of the deadliest mammals in the world, only being beaten by humans and dogs. But dogs mostly kill you by giving you rabies and humans by, you know, being human. Hippos, on the other hand, trample you gore you, and in some cases, bite off your limbs and head. So in 2009, the government decided to cull a hippo that had been identified as being aggressive towards fishermen. They called him Pepe the Hippo and summoned the military to help get rid of him. They did what they were asked to do, but later published a picture of soldiers carrying machine guns and posing with the dead Pepe. This sparked major outcry in environmental groups and the public in general, which led to a pause in the hippo cull. The pros and cons of having cocaine hippos in the Magdalena had to be weighed a bit more carefully. Let's start with the positives. Hippos eat a lot and poop a lot, and sometimes the nutrients they bring into the water can promote plant growth, which in turn provides food and shelter for fish and birds. They can also create paths where they walk and connect separate ponds and rivers and give access to other animals to new foraging areas. But most interestingly, some people see them as an accidental rewilding success story, noting that South America used to be home to massive herbivores. Glyptodons, ground sloths, and all other mega herbivores went extinct in the past 10,000 years. Restoring large herbivores to river ecosystems in South America could have a positive impact. 
Hippos would do the ecological jobs those extinct animals used to do. South American hippos would also be a sort of backup for African hippo populations, which have been in decline for the past few decades. And finally, the hippos have also become an ecotourism attraction, which has led to the building of hotels, observation decks, and other infrastructure that has given jobs to locals in the ecotourism industry. But there's also a lot of bad. If their population keeps growing, they could wreak havoc on their local ecosystem. There are currently close to 200 hippos in Colombia. They grow fast, become sexually mature at five years of age, can have kids every 18 months, and they can live up to 50 years. They also have no predators and lots of available food, so their mortality rate is extremely low. Depending on how you calculate population growth rates, there could be anywhere between 800 and 5,000 hippos in the next 25 years. Attacks on people are the main concern. The area that they live in has lots of fishing villages, and while there haven't been any deadly attacks yet, as the hippo population grows, it's only a matter of time until a fisherman crosses the wrong hippo. Also, hippo poo kills pawns. The more you know. When there's just a little extra nutrients, in this case hippo poo, in the water, plants grow really well. But when there's too much, the pond gets overrun by algae. Then, as the algae dies and decomposes, the water loses its oxygen, killing all fish living in it. This is especially dangerous for this river ecosystem because a lot of river fish have their nurseries in connected ponds. If those ponds become toxic, there's nowhere safe for them to lay their eggs. Low fish populations will affect all the animals that rely on them, as well as fishermen in the region. Local animals like river otters, capybaras, and manatees could also suffer from lack of food and die as a result of interactions with aggressive territorial hippos. Finally, as hippos walk around, their massive weight compresses the soil beneath their feet, making it harder for plants to root and eventually causing desertification. The effects of an invasive species as powerful as the hippo would be devastating. Invasive species like cats, dogs, rats, and foxes have destroyed local populations in Australia. There's a base made of everything in this whole life. Oh my god. Burmese pythons are threatening native species in Florida. And European stoats have decimated bird nesting grounds in New Zealand. The hippo could have similar or worse effects in river ecosystems of South America. It wouldn't be an overnight event, but if they managed to colonize other large rivers in the region, like the Orinoco or Amazon rivers, hundreds of local species would be at risk. Even at a local level, an expansion of the hippo throughout Colombia could be catastrophic. If hippos continue to thrive unchecked in Colombia, it will degrade ecosystems and threaten local species, with unknown snowballing effects. Fortunately, hippos are largely landlocked, or riverlocked, to the Magdalena River system, with the nearest river leading to the Amazon being about 700 kilometers away by land. Meaning that the risk of them spreading to the rest of the Amazon basin and taking over is basically null. That said, if Pablo Escobar was Brazilian instead of Colombian, the Amazon might look a lot scarier than it does today. And it already looks pretty scary. So yeah, the bad, unfortunately, outweighs the good. So what are we supposed to do with all these hippos? Calling them from helicopters or calling up the army to deal with them was considered inhumane and generally a pretty bad look for a country that's still trying to build its ecotourism industry. Castrating the males is expensive and dangerous because a large team is required to find them, tranquilize them, operate on them, and monitor them. 
The hippos also have a very thick skin that make landing a tranquilizing dart a lot harder than it seems, despite the size of the target. And also, since hippos run to the water when they're startled, they could drown if they dive after they've been tranquilized. Hippos also hide their testicles inside their body, so the procedure isn't as simple as it is in dogs and cats. So in 2023, the Colombian government announced a plan to deal with them. 85 hippos will be captured and sent to zoos around the world, and 40 hippos per year will be castrated from then on. It will cost hundreds of millions of dollars, but it will save the Magdalena River and its endemic species from the hungry, hungry cocaine hippos. If you want to see a wild hippo, you still have time. Hacienda Napoles is open to the public and has several hippos in its network of ponds and streams. You might even run into one in the streets of the town, but you should hope that you don't. And while you're there, you can explore the amazing flora and fauna of this largely uncharted river. Wildfires are an increasingly huge problem in South America and all over the world, really. In a new video on the other channel that Tasha is on, Tasha explores the cutting edge technologies that are on the front lines of the war against wildfires. She tells a story about how she personally fought a wildfire in the middle of the night at a retreat that the Dalai Lama stays at when he's in the States. And they post new educational videos every other Friday about the world of tech and its impact on us. It's really great. I promise you'll love it. It's called Mobile Syrup. You can watch by clicking here or following the link in the description. And make sure you check out the rest of the channel. What should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya.